Hello and welcome to our sleep and consciousness unit. One of my personal favorites, everybody's favorite usually, because we get to talk about something that happens to us on a regular basis. Every night when we close our eyes and fall asleep, what happens? What are some of the different reasons that we need sleep and why do we dream? So let's go ahead and get started and talk about what exactly is sleep? What is consciousness? and what happens every night when we go to bed. So sleep is categorized as an altered state of consciousness, meaning that there is a change in our conscious awareness. We already know this because we don't remember everything that happens every night when we go to sleep. We might remember some dreams or parts of our dreams. We might not be aware of our environment and our surroundings though. And that is why it's categorized as an altered state of consciousness because consciousness is our awareness of ourselves and our environment. There are many different ways that we can alter our state of consciousness, whether that's through sleeping, through meditation, or through different types of medications or drugs. These can all alter our conscious awareness. And we know this is causing a change in our brains because of EEG readings, which as you remember from our neuroscience unit is a type of brain scan. And this is going to tell us what state our brain is in based on the type of activity that is taking place. And so you can see here what an EEG brain scan, those brain waves are that we're looking at. So we can see what stage of wakefulness or sleep that we are in. So there's a lot of questions about why do we need to sleep? What is the purpose of us putting our head on our pillow and sleeping a third of our lives away? And there are a lot of different explanations as to why we sleep. Some of it comes from the ability for us to save and replenish our energy, to restore and repair our body, for our mind to help consolidate and remember the events that happened, the growth process that happens when we are sleeping at night. And of course, we do sleep to dream. But what do dreams do for us as well? And we'll take a look at that later in this unit. But let's start today by talking about what happens when we sleep, the sleep cycle. And we go through a lot of different types of cycles in our lifespan, like the circadian cycle, which is our 24 hour clock. This tells us when we have the most awareness or attention, our highest energy levels, when they dip later on in the day, and then of course when they decrease to put us asleep at night. Overall, the circadian cycles operate without day and night cues. And we can see this through studies of, for example, astronauts who go to space and still operate on a sleep-wake cycle. However, light does still play a role in our ability to fall asleep at night through the release of specific hormones. An interesting thing to note is that adult circadian cycles and teenage circadian cycles are actually a little bit different. When it comes to the time of day when you are meant to be propped up to be most awake, happens a little later in the morning for a teenager than it does for an adult. And the ability to wind down and fall asleep at night also takes place later in teenagers than it does for adults. And so the circadian cycle that many people operate on is different depending on where they're at in their lifespan. But what makes us tired enough to fall asleep at night? The brain part that's responsible for helping us fall asleep is known as the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And this is a part of the brain that signals to the pineal gland to release the hormone melatonin, which helps make us drowsy so that we can fall asleep faster and easier. The suprachiasmatic nucleus receives this information from our eyes. The more light that enters into our eyes, the less melatonin our body produces. And as it gets darker out, the more melatonin that is produced to make us drowsy and help us to fall asleep. This is one of the reasons why psychologists recommend that we don't look at our phones or other screens right before we fall asleep at night because that can disrupt our sleep process. It can give us those restless nights where we're tossing and turning and unable to really settle down to fall asleep. But once we do fall asleep, what exactly is happening inside of our brains? Again, we can look at EEG readings and they can help us see what stage of sleep a person is in based on the changes that are happening in brain activity. And so when we're awake, the type of brain waves that we see are known as alpha waves. Once we start to fall asleep, we start to enter into the sleep cycle. 
So the sleep cycle begins with stage one. And stage one is when we are still technically awake. This is the phase of sleep where we are starting to drift off into our sleep state. This can take anywhere from about 10 to 20 minutes. Those brain waves are alpha waves and some of the key features of this stage of sleep is where we start to drift off, our heart rate becomes uneven, sometimes people hallucinate, they might see or hear something in their room, and they often have a tendency to twitch or jerk and wake themselves up again. And then they have to start the process on over. But once we get through stage one and we get through that process of drifting off, we enter into what's known as NREM or non-REM sleep and that is stages two and three of our sleep stages. This is where we might have thoughts and images pop up in our head, but we're not actually dreaming. Our brain is thought to be mostly idle. So as we get into stage two sleep, we start to see a change in our brain as we move into theta waves. Our heart rate and temperature will start to decrease. We are clearly sleeping, but it's actually very light sleeping. Stage two is also characterized by these random bursts of brain activity that we can see on the EEG as sleep spindles. We might see someone sleep talk or mumble as this happens as well, even though sleep talking can really happen at any stage. And the big thing to remember about stage two is that it's where we spend most of our night because as we move through the other stages from stage three deep sleep and then back into stage two and on to REM or dreaming sleep, we continuously pass back through stage two. So we spend over half of our night in stage two at different points in time. But as we get through stage two, we start to move into stage three, which is sometimes known as stage three, four sleep. And this is that really deep sleep that we go into. So the waves here are delta waves. They're these big, long, deep waves as we enter into a very slow wave sleep. We spend about 30 minutes here at a time and it gets shorter as the night goes on. We spend most of our time in deep sleep in the first half of our sleep cycle. Some of the key features of this deep sleep is that there's no trace on memory, meaning that you're not gonna remember things that happen during this stage. It's also a very deep sleep, so it's hard to wake from. So this is usually the stage for children where we see things like bedwetting, sleepwalking, night terrors. And the reason why it's happening is because this is the stage where growth hormones are released. And so children need more deep sleep than any other age in our lifespan. And because they spend the most time in this deep sleep, they're more likely to also have the other effects of sleepwalking, sleep talking, and night terrors which we typically grow out of as we start needing less stage three sleep as we get older. But it's a really important stage because there's a lot of evidence that shows our physical and psychological well-being are dependent on getting deep sleep. And if we're sleep deprived, our body will try and put us back into stage three sleep faster and more quickly in order to help us recover from the sleep deprivation that we've experienced. And then once we get through stage three, we have to go back through the stages again. So we go from three to two, but we don't go back into one because one is where we're falling asleep and that means we would wake back up again. So we go one, two, three, three, two, and then we go into REM. And REM stands for rapid eye movement. This is the dreaming state. It's often called a paradoxical sleep because our brain is so active, but our body is so immobile. It is a, a paradox in that way. Our first dream cycle lasts about 15 minutes at the beginning of the night, and then these get longer as the night goes on. It can get up to 45 minutes for a dream by the end of the night. So it takes up about a quarter of our overall night sleep. Some of the key features of REM sleep is our heart rate increases, our breathing becomes irregular, our eyes move around, hence the rapid eye movement, our fingers might twitch, but overall, our body is paralyzed. And that's a really good thing because if our body was not paralyzed, it means that we would be acting out our dreams, which can be very dangerous and very different than sleepwalking. It's a very essential part of sleep because this stage is where we dream. 
If you wake up from this stage, chances are you will remember your dreams. When you wake up from other stages like three or two, you're less likely to remember any dreams that you had that night. So these are the different stages of sleep that we have. And again, there are some sleep disorders that go along with these different stages. So let's talk really quick about the sleep disorders before we wrap up for today. Some sleep disorders occur at different stages of sleep and some affect our sleep as a whole. For example, insomnia is the inability to fall asleep. This could happen where people have difficulty falling asleep at the beginning of the night, and for others, they may fall asleep and wake up and then have difficulty falling back asleep. It's a very common sleep disorder that affects about one in 10 adults. There's a lot of different causes of insomnia from physical or psychological reasons, and treatment can range from letting the insomnia pass to prescribing medications that will help someone fall asleep at night. Narcolepsy is a more rare type of sleep disorder. And this is when a person becomes overwhelmed with sleepiness and it usually lasts about five minutes. They are these sudden attacks where a person is unable to stay awake and they fall asleep very, very quickly. Where it typically takes us anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes to fall asleep, someone with narcolepsy can fall asleep within a matter of minutes. The cause of narcolepsy seems to be because of an imbalance of specific hormones and there is no real cure. Although doctors may prescribe things such as amphetamines in order to help a person try to stay awake. And then sleep apnea is another fairly common sleep disorder where a person stops breathing during sleep. Sometimes this is confused with snoring, but it's very severe because their body will wake them up again in order to snore in air. Because of course we need to breathe to live. What happens though is because a person is constantly waking themselves up over the course of the night, they never get to enter into those deeper stages of sleep and they spend most of their night then in stage two. So they're not getting all of the physiological and psychological benefits of having that stage three deep sleep. And so it can cause a whole host of side effects from heart disease, increased risk of stroke and so on. So it's really important that sleep apnea be addressed to help open those airwaves to allow someone to get that full night of sleep. As we mentioned before, night terrors take place in stage three sleep. And these primarily happen in children because they spend more time in that deep sleep. And night terrors are when children might get up, walk around, scream. They appear terrified, but they're not actually awake. In the morning, a child will have no memory of having this night terror because it's happening in this deep sleep. It's not a nightmare. Children typically grow out of these as they get older, as they need less stage three sleep. And they can often happen as they're experiencing a growth spurt, which is why they're in stage three more often. Sleep paralysis is a unique disorder that happens in REM sleep when a person wakes up in the course of having a dream. As you now know, when you're in REM sleep, your body is paralyzed to prevent you from getting up and acting out your dreams. But unfortunately, it sometimes happens where the switch that paralyzes your brainstem to keep you from moving around while dreaming malfunctions when you wake up. And so a person will be awake, but their body remains paralyzed. It's a very uncomfortable sensation. It usually passes within a few seconds to a few minutes, but it can also be accompanied with hallucinations of someone coming into the room. And psychologists believe that throughout history, we see evidence of sleep paralysis through reports of things like incubus attacks, so being visited by some type of demon, or even alien abduction stories. And then REM behavior disorder is the opposite. For some people, that switch that's supposed to paralyze our body when we're dreaming doesn't work and causes them to get up and act up their dreams. Again, this is very dangerous because it's different from sleepwalking, where a person is partially aware of their surroundings even though they're asleep, someone with REM behavior disorder is still very much asleep and can injure themselves or others while acting out their dreams. Last but not least, we have parasomnia, which is sleepwalking. And this is what happens again in that stage three or three, four sleep. So in deep sleep, some people will get up and act out their dreams. It's more common in children because again, they spend more time in deep sleep, but we do see an increased prevalence of sleepwalking in adults because sleep deprivation puts us into that deep sleep more often. 
And so because of that, we're also seeing an increased rise in sleepwalking in adults. So these are the different sleep disorders that can be accompanied with the different stages of sleep. Next time we talk, we'll go ahead and take a look at the different theories about why we dream. Thank you so much for watching and remember, be kind to your mind.